Hi, my name is Matt Knapper, and welcome to this week's Founded in Truth Fitbit, where we're here to discuss the book of James. Now, this week, we're not going to discuss some great deep spiritual meaning or some epiphany from the text itself to, to help and encourage your walk, uh, but we're going to talk about the name itself, the name of the book, James, after the author who wrote it. No matter where you find yourself in the body of Messiah, no matter what part of the world you are or what language you speak, you may have come across the notion that the, the name for the author of this book and the name for the book itself, James, was translated such in the English in honor of King James, the king of the 17th century who authorized the King James Version to be translated. Now, this notion is based upon the fact that the etymology of this name, James, or, or the author of this book, goes back to the Hebrew Yaakov. And this Hebrew Yaakov is rendered Jacob in the Old Testament. Knowing this bit of information, many people come to this conclusion that King James somehow had this name translated in this one book and in this one instance surrounding this one person uh, due to him authorizing this Bible and some type of honor towards him. Today we want to look at whether or not that's factual. As we look at this case and the situation, we have to look at it on two different levels. One, an etymolo etymological level. Where did the word come from? Where do these names come from? And two, a historical level. Is it truly accurate that the King James Version is where this name James for this book started? So when we look at where these names come from, James and Jacob, we have to go back to the Hebrew. We know that we can start with Yaakov, which is Jacob, one of the patriarchs of the, of the faith of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This name Yaakov, as it goes and gets transliterated into other languages, we can kind of follow its path into English. So when we go from Hebrew to Greek, and that's what we're dealing with with the book of James, when we go from Hebrew to Greek, we have a tool to help us. It's called the Septuagint. It's the Greek translation of the Old Testament from a couple hundred years, two, three hundred years before the first century. And we can see how those Jewish believers at that time translated this name Yaakov into Greek or transliterated. So we come into Greek with this name being rendered Yaakobus or Yaakovus, uh, I-A, K-O-B-O-S, as it's rendered kind of in English transliteration. And from there, if we go straight from Greek to English, we can easily see how the name Jacob comes about. And we get all kinds of names in, in English that stem from this one Hebrew root, Yaakov. We have Jacob, Jack, uh, Jim. Uh, that's kind of going into the James, but um, we have many names that kind of stem from this one thing in English, this, this one root in English. But how do we get to James? How do we get from Hebrew Yaakov that we can easily see going through Greek to English is rendered Jacob? How do we get to James? Well, the first Bibles that were translated into English actually don't come from the Greek text or the Hebrew text. These first translations of the Bible, at least in its whole and, and trying to be a true translation of the Bible into English, these first Bibles are coming from the Latin Vulgate. This is the Latin translation done by the great scholar Jerome in the fifth century. And they're taking this Latin version, which was so popularly used in the church for a thousand years, love it or hate it, and they're taking that Latin and transmitting that into English. Now, when I first started researching this, this topic, I came across the, the Latin form of this uh, name, which is Yakamus with an M. And I said, well, that's an easy fix right there. You know, Yakamus, uh, Latin, which is of the Greek Yakabus, and we can kind of see how your lips go together, how when these things are sounded out over time, they, they tend to change in languages. And it's easy to see that Yakamus in Latin is truly where we get James from. And this is, this is how it is. This is from Latin to English, Yakamus. The problem with that is that later Latin, which is where we get Jacobus, is not the Latin of the Latin Vulgate. The Latin Vulgate is Jacobus with a, with a B, and we would kind of render that Jacob as well. The other issue is that the earliest English translations coming from the Latin Vulgate picked and choose which names to translate as Jacob and which ones to translate as James. 
So this etymological uh, history doesn't exactly answer the question as to how we got James in the Bible. If you ask me, I think that maybe some of the, the modern, uh, at the time of the, of the well, I say modern, at the time of the Greek, uh, I mean, excuse me, at the time of the English translations being done in the Middle Ages, this Iacomus of Latin creeps its way into the English translations, but we really have no evidence as to why these early translators chose James in some instances and Jacob in the other. If you ask the people that suggest this notion of King James and, and honor to himself, they would say that the answer is easy, that he was simply changing it to James to honor himself. But as we look at the history of tr translations, the history of, of Bible translations in English, we can easily see that this is not the case. Now we all know that the King James Version was authorized and, and finished in 1611. Uh, if you have any friends that are really into the King James Bible, they usually will say they're into the King James, King James Bible of 1611. There were multiple versions of the King James Version, but this is the one we're talking about. This is kind of uh, the, the original, right? What some would say is the authorized version. Now that version does have the book of James rendered as James in English, are really uh, I-A-M-E-S. There's no J at the time, as many of you know. Uh, the problem with this is that the King James Version was not the first English version of the Bible. We go back 150 years, 200 years, to the year 1382, and here we find our first real translation of the Bible into English, by a great scholar, Mr. John Wycliffe. John Wycliffe translates the Bible into English, and he's coming straight from the Latin Vulgate, uh, but he chooses, in the instance of the book of James and other mentions of uh, other men in the, in the New Testament, he chooses to translate their name as James. Why? We don't know. But one thing is for sure. The book of James being rendered in English as James and not Jacob predates King James himself by 150 years. This version from John Wycliffe is, is uh, established in, in 1382 and King James himself is not going to be born until 1566. And from the Wycliffe Bible all the way to the King James Bible, we have several good translations that all fall in line with this established tra tradition of the book of James being rendered James in English from John Wycliffe forward. We have Bibles like the Great Bible and one that many of you know, the Geneva Bible. All of these Bibles can be found in print, online, or through Bible software like Logos. And you can see that all of these Bibles before King James translated the name as James. So I can't give an answer as to why Mr. Wycliffe himself chose to uh, pick and choose which names he wanted to render Jacob and which ones James, but we can very well establish in history that King James had no hand in the matter. Uh, this is very important, though, to understand the etymological roots of these names uh, on a couple of levels. Uh, the main one, I would say, is that understanding who James is in the Bible, James, the brother of, of Yeshua, the brother of Jesus, uh, understanding that his name is Yaakov or Jacobus or uh, Jacobus or Jacobus, James, but his name is Jacob. And when we look into the, uh, the history of his family lineage as recorded in the book of Matthew, we see that it was probably most likely that he was named after his grandfather, Jacob, who was probably in line and honored because of Jacob, who is in the lineage as established there as well. He's the third Jacob in the lineage of his family, not the first James. Uh, this is one reason why maybe it's a little important to understand that the root of this name James is actually Jacob. Now you can find some scholars out there, real biblical linguists and scholars who suggest that maybe we could go back to the name Jacob as the author for the book of James. This is going against hundreds of years of tradition that sometimes can be very hard to break, but none of these scholars are trying to do so to counter this book being named after King James. All of these scholars are being 
uh, motivated by biblical uh, uh, tradition and biblical translations being across the board the same as they are in one passage and another. So I hope this edifies you. I hope that it helps understand that some of these conspiracy theories that get floated around about our English Bibles sometimes simply aren't true. Uh, some interesting facts. This name across languages is uh, often uh, in different languages translated either with an M or with a B. English is not the only one that does this, but one in particular that I found interesting was Spanish. And I'm looking at a sheet here because I'm no Spanish scholar, but uh, we have uh, Jamie, Jacob, Iago, Diego, Tiago, Santiago, uh, and Jacob in Spanish, all coming from this same root. So you see a couple of names there in Spanish that come uh, through into Spanish with either an M or a B, and you can find this in multiple language, uh, multiple languages. One interesting fact about Spanish itself, this word Santiago, and I saw some people online mention it already, Santiago in Spanish actually comes from the, the, the rendering of his name as Saint uh, James uh, or Saint Jacob, uh, but it's Sant Iago, Iago coming from this rendering of uh, Yaakov. So a couple of interesting facts there, but none of those facts contain any historical accuracy to the idea that the book of James was named such in English to honor King James himself. Have a great week, Fit Fam, and uh, continue to dig deep and study your words daily.